What is Armstrongism? Armstrongism are the doctrines and religious movement originating with Herbert W. Armstrong, who founded the Worldwide Church of God and Ambassador College. Herbert Armstrong died in January 1986 at the age of 94. Joseph Tkach Sr. succeeded Armstrong as Pastor General. Beginning in the late 1980s, Tkach Sr. began a series of doctrinal changes that transformed the worldwide Church of God from an aberrant expression of Christianity into an evangelical denomination. In the early 1990s, WCG adopted a Trinitarian view of God. In 1995, Tkach Sr. gave two major sermons to the church congregations of Worldwide Church of God in which he repudiated those teachings of Herbert W. Armstrong that were deemed to be heretical. This action led to the largest split in the group's history. Hundreds of ministers and ten thousands of members left to start or join several hundred Armstrong devoted groups. Some of the most influential of these Armstrong devoted groups are the Living Church of God led by Roderick C. Meredith, the United Church of God led by Victor Kubik, the Philadelphia Church of God led by Gerald Fleury, the Restored Church of God led by David Pack, Church of God a Worldwide Association led by Jim Franks, and the Continuing Church of God led by Bob Teal. So what does Armstrongism and its splinter groups believe, teach, and practice? When it comes to the nature of God, Armstrongism denies the doctrine of the Trinity and declares that the Trinity is a false doctrine and pagan. Armstrongism teaches that the Hebrew word for God, which is Elohim, is a uniplural noun analogous in meaning to such words such as family, church, and group. Since Armstrongism teaches that the word Elohim is analogous in meaning to such words as family, church, and group, it is taught that God is not merely one personage or even limited to a trinity, but that God is a family, that the word God is a family name or surname, and that this God family consists currently only of God the Father and the Word, who later became Jesus Christ, the Son of God. They are two separate and individual persons. Armstrongism teaches that God is reproducing himself and that the mystery of the gospel is that the ultimate destiny of all humans is to become a God as well as to become God as God is God. People are taught that they will be born again in the future to become members of the God family. What this means is that they will become equivalent to God and a member of the Godhead at the first resurrection. When it comes to man's ultimate destiny, Armstrongism teaches that those humans that have proven themselves to be, quote, true Christians, will become God and that they will someday advise and counsel God himself. Armstrongism teaches that Jesus was not the Son of God before he was born of the Virgin Mary, that in the Incarnation, Jesus Christ ceased to be God and became fully man. As a man, he developed the perfection of spiritual character that was necessary to become our Savior and to pay the penalty for our sin. When it comes to the death of Jesus Christ, Armstrongism teaches that the actual cause of Jesus Christ's death was that he was speared in his side by one Roman soldier and then he was stabbed a second time by another Roman soldier to ensure that he was dead. There is a footnote for Matthew 27 verse 49 found in the New American Standard Bible which reads, Some early manuscripts read, And another took a spear and pierced his side, and there came out water and blood. This footnote is used by adherents of Armstrongism to say that this is a so-called missing verse in the Holy Bible that proves Jesus Christ's death was actually caused by a spear in his side by a Roman soldier. Lastly, Armstrongism denies the bodily resurrection of Jesus, teaching instead that his body disappeared and 
that he was raised as a spirit being. He was born again into the Godhead at his resurrection, which was not physical, but only spiritual. He was no longer human, but an immortal divine spirit being and again a member of the family of God. Armstrongism flatly denies the deity and personhood of the Holy Spirit. Armstrongism reduces the Holy Spirit to an impersonal force and an it, while at the same time exalting men to be gods. The Holy Spirit is described as just being the mind and the very power of God which expresses the unified creative will of the God family. The Holy Spirit is described as an it and is what we receive during conversion. Armstrongism teaches that salvation is not a present reality, but totally future. Armstrongism teaches that no one except Jesus is yet saved or born again. Salvation, according to Armstrongism, involves both faith and works. Acceptance of Jesus Christ cleanses from past sins and enables a person to keep the law. Justification and ultimate salvation, which really means becoming God, will only be given on the condition that the law is kept. Adherence to such things as baptism, which you must follow their specific process of baptism, as well as adherence to the Ten Commandments, Sabbath observance, observance of the annual feast days, observance of dietary meat laws, and mandatory giving of tithes, which could be up to 20 to 30 percent of your income, as well as offerings. Only those who develop spiritually shall finally be given immortality and will then become God. Anglo-Israelism is a concept which is also known as British Israelism, the United States and Great Britain in prophecy, the forgotten key to Bible prophecy, the missing key to Bible prophecy, and it goes on and on and on. There's many more names. This idea teaches that only the white-skinned people groups who are specifically of the Anglo-Saxon Celtic countries, which are Britain, its former empire, and the United States of America, and those from Northwestern Europe, are the direct physical descendants of the ten lost tribes of Israel, or, in other words, the ten tribes of the northern kingdom of Israel. This belief strongly influences the way in which scripture, especially Bible prophecy, is interpreted. When it comes to the church, Armstrongism teaches that all Christian denominations are apostate, they teach counterfeit Christianity, and have lost the true biblical gospel of Jesus Christ which is the message of the kingdom and government of God. Each of the different Armstrong Splinter groups teach that their group is God's true church today and that they, like Herbert W. Armstrong, are the continuation of the only true movement of God in the world that is ordained by God to prepare the world for the return of Christ. When discussing end time prophecies, Armstrongism teaches that after the Great Tribulation, Jesus Christ will return and the first resurrection will take place at that time. What will happen is that the just will rise, being born again as God, and that they will become immortal and will rule over the nations together with Christ for a thousand years. Armstrongism teaches that after the Battle of Armageddon, everyone who has ever lived and those who haven't had a fair chance to hear the truth will partake in the second resurrection. They will hear the gospel during the great white throne judgment and have 100 years in what is called a real first chance to convert by proving that they want to live differently than they did during their first life. Those who don't will be cast into the lake of fire. After the judgment of the great white throne, the handful of recalcitrant sinners will be resurrected in the third resurrection and cast into the lake of fire which for Armstrongism is the same as annihilationism. So now let's look at what the Bible's response is to the beliefs, teachings, and practices of Armstrongism. 
When it comes to God and the nature of the Godhead, the Holy Bible from Genesis to Revelation reveals that God is one in nature or essence. It also reveals that this one God eternally exists in three distinct co-equal and co-eternal persons, namely the Father, the Son Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. The doctrine of the Trinity is a strict monotheism, which is the teaching that there exists in all the universe a single being known as God, who is uncreated, self-existent, and unchangeable. The word Elohim can refer to the one true God, to a false God, to angels, and to human beings. In its wide application, this name is unusual and difficult to translate into English. When the word Elohim refers to a single being, such as the one true God or a false God, it takes a singular verb. When Elohim refers to more than one being, as in the heavenly powers, such as the angels or God and the angels, or in the human powers, such as the judges, it takes a plural verb. In no case does the word Elohim refer to a family of beings, whether they are human or divine, nor is the word Elohim analogous to such words as family, church, and group. Armstrongism's God family concept teaches that the Father and Jesus are two separate gods, which is by theism, and that humans will become God and be added to the Godhead as God. What Herbert W. Armstrong and his disciples are essentially teaching as mankind's ultimate destiny is polytheism, which is the belief in many gods. This is known as idolatry and is described as sin according to the Holy Bible. Revelation 5.10 promises Christians that we will be joint heirs with Jesus Christ as kings and priests, but we will never ever be gods or become God as mentioned in Isaiah 43 verse 10 which reads you are my witnesses declares the Lord and my servant whom I have chosen so that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he before me there was no God formed and there will be none after me in John chapter 1 verse 1 through 3 verse 14 and verse 18 John declares in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God in verse 14 John calls Jesus the monogenous the only one of his kind the unique son of God in verse 18 Jesus is said to be the monogenous theos exigisato God the unique one of a kind son who exegetes or brings forth or declares the father he is able to do this because he comes from the father's bosom denoting the closest possible relationship between the two the holy bible does not teach that jesus was not the son of god before he was born of the virgin mary or only at his baptism john's prologue shows that the father and son relationship is eternal. The Holy Bible teaches, as seen in Philippians chapter 2, verse 6, that Jesus never ceased to be God, although he limited himself to a human form. Jesus did become human at the incarnation, but he did not take on a fallen, sinful nature. Jesus was not sinful flesh. When it comes to the footnote that was found in Matthew 27 verse 49 in the New American Standard Bible, this clearly indicates that there was some earlier manuscripts that had the aforementioned phrase written in them. However, the vast majority of the earlier manuscripts do not include this phrase. It can therefore be safely said that the phrase in question is obviously false and does not belong in the New Testament. Despite textual variations that exist, the rules of textual criticism allows us to have a Holy Bible today, like the NASB, that is trustworthy and very close to what the prophets of Israel and Jesus' followers originally wrote. Biblically, it is clear that Jesus Christ chose and willed his moment of death. 
That moment was induced not by another spear, emotional stress, heart attack, or any other, but by his will alone. Though fully human, he is also fully divine. As God, he could not die from external sources, but only of his own volition and will. See the following verses such as Matthew 27 verse 45 through 56, Mark 15 verses 23 to 41, Luke 23 verses 44 to 49, and John chapter 19 verses 28 and 37, as well as John chapter 21 verse 24. When discussing the bodily resurrection of Jesus Christ, the Holy Bible clearly shows that Jesus was raised in the same body in which he was crucified. Jesus said, destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. John then makes it clear what the Lord Jesus meant, but he spoke of the temple of his body. The Holy Bible shows that Jesus' body was raised as his disciples could clearly testify. John chapter 20 verse 20 and John chapter 20 verse 27 are very specific about that. The Holy Bible teaches that the Holy Spirit is both personal and deity as seen in Acts chapter 5 verse 3 and 4. The Holy Spirit is a he and he is a comforter and a teacher. Jesus Christ said so in John chapter 14 verse 26. Both the Holy Spirit and Jesus are said to be the power of God. Both the Holy Spirit and Jesus are said to be the wisdom of God. Both the Holy Spirit and Jesus were poured out. If the personhood of the Holy Spirit is denied by Armstrong's followers based upon these characteristics, then the personhood of Jesus Christ must also be denied. By continuing to call God the Holy Spirit and it, the teachers of Armstrongism are causing their adherents to show defiant irreverence toward God by refusing to refer to the Holy Spirit, who is God, as He and Him. As a result, they are defaming God. The Holy Bible calls this blasphemy, and this is sin. The Holy Bible clearly shows that people are born again and totally saved as a past, present, and future reality when they repent of their sins and, by grace through faith, receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. The Bible record clearly proves that salvation is by grace alone, through faith alone, and Jesus Christ alone, without works. It is very clear in Scripture that people are saved when they respond by faith to God's gracious act of sending Jesus to die on the cross for their sin. Salvation is God's gift and it cannot be worked for or earned as a result of people's efforts. Something earned can no longer be a gift. It is wages, as seen in Romans 4, chapter 4 and 5. God's gift is His grace, which caused Him to send Jesus to die on the cross for people's sin. Jesus' death on the cross was the demonstration of God's grace. This death of Christ Jesus on the cross was a free gift since there was no one who deserved being died for. But God demonstrates his own love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And this is seen in Romans chapter 5 verse 8. God puts people right with him through their faith in Jesus Christ. A person must surrender their sin and life to Jesus through confession, repentance, and the indwelling Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 2 verse 38 does not teach that baptism or any other good works are a prerequisite for receiving salvation. The biblical term begotten is not analogous to unborn fetus as taught by Herbert W. Armstrong and his disciples. The Greek word for begotten means that which has already come forth whether of fruit or animal. Believers and followers of Jesus Christ are not waiting working and hoping to be born again at some future time after this life in order to become God. They are waiting for Jesus to return in order to be with God for eternity. True believers in this life have been born again and already have 
present tense, received eternal life, not temporary life. 1 John chapter 5, verse 13 teaches, These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have, present tense, eternal life. In order to try to convince people of this idea of Anglo-Israelism, adherents of Armstrongism twist verses from scripture such as Genesis chapter 49. They also heed fables in the form of legends or myths, and they heed endless genealogies in the form of gene genealogical charts and form faulty beliefs from biased genetic research studies. By doing these things, the teachers of Armstrongism are causing its adherents to sin against God by making them disobey God's inspired command, which is found in 1 Timothy 1, verse 3 and 4, which charges to teach no other doctrine, nor give heed to fables and endless genealogies, which cause disputes rather than godly edification, which is in faith. It may be true that a few Israelites escaped the Assyrians and migrated to Europe. However, by the time of the New Testament, all of the tribes of Israel were present. The central tenets of Anglo-Israelism have been refuted consistently and convincingly by evidence from modern theological, genetic, linguistic, archaeological, and philological research. Nevertheless, there are quite a few British and American cults Armstrongism included, which holds to this teaching because it gives them a special role as God's chosen people. When it comes to the discussion of the one true church, there is no organization, denomination, or religious movement that can claim exclusive designation as the only true church or God's true church today. Christ's universal church consists of all the redeemed in Jesus Christ in all of the ages. There is no evidence that Herbert W. Armstrong, his movement, his disciples, or their organizations are uniquely ordained of God to proclaim an end-time message. In fact, the fruit bared by Armstrong and his devoted followers is the evidence that proves their claims as just the opposite and false. In discussing end-time prophecies, according to the Holy Bible, there are only two resurrections as seen in Revelation chapter 20. Revelation chapter 20 verses 11 through 15 clearly shows that the gospel will not be preached during the great white throne judgment so that people will have a, quote, real first chance to convert. The Holy Bible clearly says in John chapter 5 verses 28 and 29, as well as Hebrews chapter 9 verse 27 and Revelation chapter 20 verses 4 and 6 and 11 and 12 that after death everybody will be resurrected to face judgment and those who are condemned will not be annihilated but punished forever. What Armstrong adherents are clearly teaching is that there is a second chance. However, the Holy Bible clearly demonstrates that there is no second chance to hear the gospel during the judgment. Not even for those who died before Jesus Christ came to earth because the Holy Bible clearly shows in the book of Acts and in the book of Romans and in other areas that they had other means to receive forgiveness of sin. What is the source of authority that is claimed by Armstrongism? Well, the only recognized source of authority claimed in Armstrongism and its splinter groups is said to be the Holy Bible. However, the final authority for those who are members of any Armstrong splinter group are the writings of Herbert W. Armstrong and his disciples and their interpretations of the Bible and not the text of the Holy Bible itself. Armstrongism claims that their church groups are the true church of God who have the only true interpretation of the word of God, which essentially says and means that you cannot interpret the Holy Bible for yourself. Anyone who is a member of any Armstrong splinter group and disagrees with the Armstrong interpretations of the Bible, Armstrongism, and with any of the Armstrong splinter group's ordained ministers are excommunicated and shunned by the members. So what is the gospel? 
The Armstrong Splinter Groups proclaim that the gospel of Christ is the good news of the soon coming kingdom and government of God, and of the forgiveness of our sins through Christ's sacrifice. Christ's gospel of the kingdom of God reveals the means by which we are able to be qualified by God to be ruling members of His kingdom. Essentially, the gospel according to Armstrongism is that God became a man so that, quote, worthy humans can ultimately become God. Armstrongism preaches another Jesus, a different spirit, and a different gospel. The gospel is the good news that God became man in Jesus Christ. He lived the life that we should have lived and died the death that we should have died in our place. Three days later, he rose from the dead, proving that he is the Son of God and offering the gift of salvation to all who repent and believe the gospel. The true gospel of God, which is the good news, is that God actually entered history and provided salvation for humankind. God became a man in Jesus Christ, and while never ceasing being God, he sacrificed himself by dying on the cross in our place for our sins. As a result, he provides salvation from the death penalty and reconciles us to himself. He was then resurrected from the grave on the third day in the same body in which he was crucified, was seen by many, and then forty days later he ascended into heaven. On the day he returns from earth from heaven, we, the saints of Christ Jesus, will be made immortal and given imperishable bodies. We will inherit the kingdom of God and reign with God for one thousand years, and then, ultimately, we will be with God and glorify God forever on an entirely holy and righteous eternal new earth. The Holy Bible makes it abundantly clear that God created man and that he created him for his glory. God's purpose for mankind is that mankind will live with him on an entirely holy and righteous eternal earth, the new earth, when heaven and earth are joined together. Additionally, when it comes to mankind's true ultimate destiny, mankind was created to learn God's ways and maintain God's kingdom dominion over the earth and all creation throughout endless ages and world without end. Therefore, the ultimate purpose of man, according to the Holy Bible, is simply to glorify God. God is seeking the bride body people, the chosen, and the elect of the earth. Not a particular denomination, but a people who are prepared to assume their eternal responsibilities. They will constitute the global governing body for the new earth. It is for this reason that we are created in this earth, from this earth, which is dust, and for this earth. For those of you who are watching this presentation and may have questions about Armstrongism or even if you are in an Armstrong group and may have your doubts about it, I would like for you to apply these verses from the Holy Bible, which are Acts 17 verse 11 and 1 Thessalonians chapters, chapter 5 verse 21 and 22. Like the Bereans, I would encourage you to please be noble-minded and also receive the word with great eagerness, examining the scriptures daily to see whether the things that are being said are, are actually supported by and in harmony with God's word. Also, examine everything carefully and hold fast to that which is good and most importantly true and abstain from every form of evil. Next, I would also like to encourage you to apply Herbert W. Armstrong's own words to Armstrongism, which would be, don't believe me, believe your Bible. Let the Bible interpret the Bible. And then lastly, check up on me. The last thing I would like to do is to leave a warning for anyone that may be in an Armstrong splinter group or may be contemplating joining an Armstrong splinter group. Please know that all of the Armstrong adhering splinter groups that call themselves the Church of God or God's Church or God's True Church, that they have a Pharisee-like adherence to the law, that they are in fact leaven groups that need to be on guard against and should be avoided. Armstrongism is a false religious system that teaches a false God, a false Christ Jesus, and also a false gospel.